If you look up the word garden, you'll see a small piece of ground used to grow flowers, fruits and vegetables. Today, we're going to get inspiration from some of those. Today, I've chosen a few different gardens to inspire us. I'm not going to cover them all because there'd be too many. I'm going to start with the container garden. Now, with this garden, you don't even need a garden. All you need is a space to put a pot and soil. This is great for small backyards or balconies. The fragrance of the flower garden. I think that's what we all aspire to. This will vary from area to area, from country to country. And what you grow will change dramatically depending on the climate. Another interpretation of this is the rock garden, with the backdrop for this being soil, sand and rocks. This is a very natural looking garden. Even the smallest of vegetable patches can support pollinators, reduce carbon dioxide, increase green space and improve your health by eating fresh homegrown, but it also helps the environment. I think we all aspire to have a little patch in the garden, even if it's just a pot with herbs in the kitchen. If you're lucky enough to have wildflowers, it increases the air quality. The flowers improve the soil health. It's a great habitat for pollinators and also for small mammals. Speciality gardens, which is what I'm going to feature mostly today, are the English cottage garden and the French country garden. We're going to start with the English cottage garden. When we think of an English cottage garden, it tends to be a little bit more wild and diverse, almost unkept. Um, it's usually has paths with either made of grass or stone that meander from one area to another. The florals and bushes are, whereas they're planned, there's no rhyme or reason to them. It's a mixture of all different types. Um, this is what lends itself to that wild, unkempt look. There's usually a, a water feature of some kind, um, hedges and borders, and a lot of the time, more historically, little gardens within gardens. You think of the white picket fence and the hedgerows. All of these you will find in an English cottage garden. There will be containers, there will be pots, but the biggest thing is a profusion of flowers and greenery. Depending on how formal or informal your English country garden is, you may find neat hedges, clearly defined lawns, and lots of mixes of greens and florals. Um, so there's the use of symmetry and mapped gardens. Again, paths feature greatly, leading to archways or significant urns or water features. I think that water features, whether they're man-made or natural, are a must in any garden, and that's my preference. I just don't think you can beat it. The sound of flowing water, uh, the, the wildlife and the birds that it attracts, I just think it sets the garden apart from a place that is pretty to a place that is beautiful. And of course, depending on the size or how elaborate you want to be, these water features can be as much as 
an overturned garbage lid to waterfalls and long gazing pools. It doesn't matter. Whatever you feel is perfect for the space and the look that you want in your garden. This timeless beauty and rustic charm, which is the French country garden, it's incorporating traditional plants, rustic furniture, soothing fountains, and this all creates an intimate and enchanting personal space, along with the harmony, order and symmetry of the lavender fields. It's imposing order on nature and it's creating the most beautiful landscape. When it comes to creating a French style garden, choose a focal point. Be sure to use symmetry in your gardening incorporate stones on surfaces and with design elements such as garden features um, keep the colored palette more simple and above all create spaces for eating and relaxing When it comes to creating an English country garden, create rooms with pathways and enclosed spaces using pergolas or visual walls such as greenery or hedges. And try to have a lawn area, but fill your garden beds with colour and variety. Let your imagination run wild. Plant pots can be anything. Rusty watering cans, old teapots, milk jugs, they can all live again. Repurpose old furniture, uh, ceramics, stoneware, crockery and dinnerware can become anything you imagine it can be. Bird baths or feeders, teapots for planters. Just keep them watered and look after them. <laughs> I love to see the old wheelbarrows filled with flowers, whether it's intentional or looks as though they've just been left and nature's taken over. I think it's a fantastic look. If you think about it, anything that you can put soil in, you can plant up. The only thing you have to remember when the temperature gets hot, that especially when they're above ground, they need to be watered so much more. And don't forget to use things that have been around the house, whether it's old dresses or pots and pans. Everything can look beautiful in the right setting. I know in the coming weeks I'm going to be trying some things from this video for my backyard and I think this is going to be one of them. I've seen this a lot with old lamps that have been turned into planters. Also, things that have been turned into bug hotels and um, cages for greenery. I just think some of them are so cool and so different. I'm definitely going to be trying some of these. Something to remember, especially when it comes to the garden. Use your imagination and beauty is in the eye of the beholder. If you find something beautiful in everyday life 
and it's old or it's broken, don't throw it away. Find a place for it somewhere else. And in the garden, it'll all fit. A lovely idea I've seen is with these beautiful old chandeliers. And I've got a few of these. And I'm certainly going to be trying that in the upcoming weeks. Also the idea of using these old um, chandeliers as birdhouses. They just look so amazing. And you're doing so much for nature. Another idea is the lighting. I absolutely love this. And this is one I'm going to be trying at night. So I can't wait to get started. I absolutely love these moss chairs and the furniture. I don't know how realistic they are. I don't know how much room you would need for them. They look spectacular um, and I would love to have them and maybe one day, but I think they would be a lot of work and you certainly would need a lot of garden space to put a lot of these things in. Let me know if anyone has actually tried any of these moss chairs or furniture pieces. I love the idea of them. I'm just not sure how long it would take to come to fruition. I know you've seen this uh, picture frames that I've done before. I've done one in the bathroom. Another thing that I would love to do is incorporate mirrors in the backyard. Now this is something that is it can be a little bit dodgy if you've got young children or pets I think you have to be careful but if you have the right setting and the right environment they can be very very beautiful I also have lots of these obelisk that I use for training plants I usually put them in plant pots when I have ivy or items that need to grow up and around things so I've, I'm going to be using those a lot in my garden this year but in the upcoming weeks I have got a couple of quite big projects that I'm going to be doing in the backyard um, and there's quite a few DIY things that I'm going to try. I have a couple of them on the go which will be in next week's video. I love these little spoons that have been turned into bugs. I'm going to try this with some driftwood that I had left over from my front porch project. I'm definitely going to be picking up some hula hoops from Dollar Tree and making these. And this is another thing that I thought is really pretty, just hanging little crystals in the trees. Um, this is a beautiful thing. This is the embroidery hoops and it's just, they're hung on string and they're stretched with pretty pieces of lace. Um, just some ideas that I'm going to try in the upcoming weeks. Again, as I said, I have tried a few of them and they will be in upcoming videos. So I hope you enjoyed this inspiration for your summer backyard. I'm going to include a couple of little clips that we took of the eclipse. We were on the path um, of the full eclipse and just as it took place where we were, the sky cleared and we had the most perfect view. And it really was inspiring and magical to see. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you all next time.